They say for every great tragedy, there's a story behind it. They say for every great war, there is a story behind it. There are tales to be told, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me get all this out the way. Let me get this all out the way. Let me get back in my bag. And today, we done gone through kill shot. We done seen what happened. We done see what happened with MGK. We done followed up on MGK. MGK dang near done quit making music. He doing he doing movies now. You know, shaving his head, going Britney Spears crazy out here. I just spit. That was gross. <laughs> I almost did at least. But anyway. But what about the story behind the story? Now, Illa the producer is the person who produced the kill shot beat for Eminem. Hmm. He's the one that gave M the jam. He said, yo, yo, M, you trying to get an MGK? You trying to get back an MGK? And Marshall's like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get back an MGK. Like, All right, cool. Take this, man. Just, just take it. Don't, don't say nothing. Just take it. You know what I'm saying? So we need to know the story behind the beats of Killshot. Illa the producer, I'm upset with you a little bit, dog. I'm upset with you a little bit. You keep coming out and talking about when Body's supposed to drop. That shit. Drop? And then you come out and say you don't even know if the soundtrack is. Let's get into this. The making of Killshot with Illa the producer. Ready, set, go. The breakdown. Changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't have to believe in my sound so much in Kamikaze. If you didn't know, what you probably do, Illa was also producing on Kamikaze a lot. Illa, as a producer, has definitely been getting clouded up lately. Which, you know, that's what happens when you work with M. By the way, everybody who's been hitting up uh, 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 Bizarre, y'all don't got to keep doing that. Thank you guys so much for doing it, but, you know. And, and I see, I know y'all are excited and stuff, but I don't want it to be like spam or something to him, but... We gonna see, um, I'm still trying to get uh, something worked out where we may, may, may be doing a song together or something. So thank you guys so much. Uh, oh yeah, today, I also think that I'm going to be dropping the, the uh, well, either today or tomorrow. I think it's gonna be tomorrow. Where I'm gonna drop it behind the scenes of the Chit Chat music video. Behind the scenes of the Chit Chat music video. You feel me? So, yeah. Pretty sure, so. The fact that he did, I'm forever loyal to him. So you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. I'm like, all right, that's how we gonna rock. And I'm gonna give him the hardest beats I can find. Stand, stand, son. Listen, man, dad isn't mad, but how you damn. gonna name yourself after a damn gun and have a... Okay. So when I originally started the beat for Kill Shot, it was actually from gigs. He always Ooh. asked me for, like, these horror movies. Hold on. So this was gonna go to gigs? Oh my God. Kells, you almost dodged a bullet. Gigs could have came and saved you. Gigs could have snuck in there and said, hey, mate. It's bloody brilliant the way you're doing it. Let me look at the, the, the beat is bloody brilliant. Give it this way now. You know what I mean? More fire for the head top. More tunes. That's crazy. That's how rap works, though. You'd be surprised how uh, what beats people turn down and what beats were originally supposed to be for certain artists. You'd be real surprised, I bet you. All right, ready to go. That's what I was thinking when I made the Kill Shot beat. just something mean. It sounds like a horror movie. When I realized it was going to go to Eminem was the morning that MGK dropped Rap Devil. So he knew he was going to diss MGK literally the morning of that song. So he wasn't playing. People were sitting there like, oh, M is waiting too long. Oh, what is he doing? He was cooking, bro. It takes a while to chef up the right thing. That's why I always say, don't rush. I even said he didn't have to respond to Rap Devil because Rap Devil to me wasn't even touching, um, not, was it not alike? Wasn't even touching that. So why you got to respond to something where someone didn't even hit you as hard as you hit them? So, But that's dope to know that he was right out the gate. Oh, rap devil, huh? 
Let's get it then. Ready to go. You know, I was in Miami with my girl on vacation celebrating Kamikaze, mm -hmm. and I see Eminem, MGK diss. I'm like, what? Oh, so I clicked on it. I'm like, damn, that's how it is, Ronnie. You know what I'm saying? Right away, I went into my folder and tried to find like the hardest beats possible. And then I sent them. And here's the thing that is confused. Ronnie J co-produced The Ringer. Ronnie J also produced Rap Devil. Did somebody talk to Ronnie J? Y'all just you just feeding you just feeding weapons to both sides. What is you America? You just you just feeding weapons to both sides and watching the whole thing just crumble underneath you. All right, let it start go. Like Someone talk weeks. to that Ronnie J. Eight o'clock at night. I'm like, yo, I sent gigs some crazy shit. Uh, hit gigs, and he told me what beat he used. He didn't use that one, so I sent it right away. Like, yo, here's here's one more. Damn. Snuck so it in in the buzzer beat. Shot, the first sound I used was this piano that I found from um, a loop pack from two dope boys. It was the chord progression that really stood out to me. It was oh, really dope. theatrical. Like, so I love watching how they construct I beats. Automation on it to make I have it way too much breathe. respect for producing to even like try, but I just love watching it. And hearing producers talk about the way they make beats. I usually do a hi-hat after I do the melody, but this time I wanted a snare. I knew I wanted something with a lot of pop to it. I added mm. this plug-in sausage fat. Mm. Makes it really stand out in the mix. Mm. Once I felt good about the snare, I added a couple of hi-hats. This is the first hi-hat. But it didn't... It's crazy seeing it constructed, though. <laughs> That's I didn't dope. want all that. I just wanted the triple effect at the beginning. Just to give it a little bounce. Second hi-hat. Ah, that's a dope to me. Involved. Like, all this stuff to me is so fun to watch. Just being, like, when it comes to music production and all together of music production, where it's the making the beat, the rhyming on the lyrics, the all of that. To me, that stuff is just fun to watch. I, I really love it. And hearing producers break down how they found certain things, what plugs, VSTs they used. And then, like, knowing what the final product was, oh, boy. Oh boy! Ready, set, go. I picked two of them because the first one is is short and it has a tripled up effect. Then the second one has like a reverse symbol after the first triple up effect. So it it, it gives the, the the track rhythm. Yeah. I tried like four different kick patterns, but this is the the one I uh, finally decided to go with. Okay. Once all the drums were there and the, the samples moving like I wanted it to move and everything was fitting together like a puzzle, I was like, all right, perfect. Now I can go and do my favorite thing, the 808. You know what I'm saying? That thing. The 808 will give the beat life. It's hitting in between the kicks and it's actually following some of the rhythm of the sample. So there's rhythms that somebody that's technical can just jump all over. Uh -huh. Since I didn't use a lot you of can't sound, hear it. <laughs> I used the ranging to build the the drama and you know what I mean, build the crescendo of the beat. I took the sample and then I. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, this is just dope to me, man. Like, it's like, it's like watching someone construct a weapon. Like, I put the barrel here, I put the suppressor there, I put the trigger, the light squeeze on it. That's just dope, right? Sir? And this was used as a weapon of mass destruction. Ready, set, go. Half time. This is the sound by itself, and this is it with it on. They gave it a dramatic mm. breakdown, and he used it perfectly. I added my tag. Then I was like, all right, this is perfect. I smooth didn't even hear that tag. That's weird. Boy, y'all ripped it, boy, you will destroy it. They put muzzles on every toy to kill the noise. I am six, like Kaya Chase, six, get involved. Off the Disney Sigma Freud should get the call. Yeah! It's up to as a lyricist. Like, I think pretty much everybody who's a fan of rap is a fan of Eminem in some light like, because he's like the top. I wouldn't say all that. Ever. You know what I'm saying? And he's on the Mount Rushmore of rap. You can't take him off there. Great. I would agree with that. 50. Kendrick. Kanye, everybody that we look up to has said he's, you know what I mean, top five. For yeah. me, this has been like that's not even a question. Blessing that I've ever had to experience. You know what I'm saying? I'm forever grateful, forever loyal. 
Had enough of this tatted up mumble rapper. How to fuck him and I battle? He'll have to fuck him in my flannel. I'll give him Don't my sandals, it. cause he knows long Don't as I'm shady, he's gonna have to live in my shadow. That's how the kill shop beat was made. If you want to watch the whole video, go check it out on the Rap Genius page. It's still called the Rap Genius. It's genius, but it's called the Making of Eminem's Kill Shot with Illa the producer. If y'all want to go check that whole thing out, it's on there. Shout out to Illa the producer for for giving M the beat. Um, I'm still upset at you with the body soundtrack though. 